Hey guys, in this video, I want to share my bad experience with the Ola scooter. And I know that I'm not the only one who is sharing this, but this is something that I felt that really need to put this across on YouTube, on my channel, so that many people who are purchasing the Ola scooter will have to have this check done or probably be a little more careful when you have your scooter purchased. This is one part and uh, I will I will probably put this video into two sections like, uh, you know, the positive side and the negative side. I'll definitely put in my views on what went good and what did not go good. And what is it that Ola has to do to ensure that these kind of issues do not happen again? Let me just start by telling that I had received the scooter. 3rd of April is when I actually received my scooter and that too, I had it not delivered to my home. I had to go to a hotel and get that scooter delivered. So that's all fine. I mean, uh, that's okay. I do understand that, you know, delivery to all each and every home will definitely be a time taking task. And when these kind of programs happen where it's nearby to your home, you can just go ahead and pick the scooter up yourself. The only places that have been after the scooter was delivered to me was uh, to a couple of eateries nearby my home as well as a few temples so that I get my puja done for my scooter. So on a whole, on a whole I guess I had only ridden around 45 kilometers on my scooter. That's it. So day before yesterday, I had actually taken the scooter out to the shop to get the PPF uh, film applied and took the scooter there. Uh, it was somewhere around 4.35 p.m. in the evening that I reached that particular shop. That's around 10 to 12 kilometers from my home. Now, when I was re leaving my home, actually, I had the scooter battery at somewhere around 50-ish percentage. And by the time I reached there with a various mixed mode of drives in the traffic and stuff, I think it was somewhere around 42 to 45 percent. Now, I've just taken the vehicle out in the evening. I've just left it at the shop. He had just left it there since it was evening and he had told me that it would take a, a day uh, or so for the work. He said that he would be starting on it tomorrow. I said, yeah, fine. That shouldn't be a problem. This happened when this is on 11th of April, 3rd of April, I have received my vehicle and 11th of April. Well, this happens or 12th of April, I would say hardly 10 days, uh, not even 10 days. And yeah, it breaks my heart to a certain extent, but well, okay. Uh, moving on, on 12th, I receive a call at around 10 o'clock in the morning from this guy from the shop stating that the scooter is not switching on. He needs to unlock the handle at least so that he can go ahead and move the scooter around for the wash and application of PPF and stuff. So he said that the scooter is not switching on. Afternoon around 3, 3.30 p.m. I just went there because he said that no, it's absolutely not starting at all. Uh, now, what exactly do you mean by starting? The scooter was not at all switching on. 11th of April, I'm sorry. I had left the vehicle at the shop. It had 40 plus percentage of the battery and uh, also showed a range of 40 to 45 kilometers as such. And all this guy from the shop has done uh, is moved it from the entrance. That's hardly even 10 meters, guys. He has just switched on and he has just moved the vehicle into the inside of the shop. That's the only thing that he has done. So I went there and uh, all I could see is the scooter just lying around as it is that I had left it on the previous day. And only thing is that uh, it is not switching on right now. So uh, guys, here is my vehicle and it is not switching on even after I get the power button over here. Ideally, it's supposed to switch on. It's not happening since uh, I guess today afternoon or morning. So the showroom guy actually gave me a call and it did have charge. At the time of me leaving the vehicle, it did have charge. I will also remove the parking stand as well and also try to switch it on. You can just see nothing is happening absolutely nothing i don't know if this is to do with a software glitch or it has to do with uh, something else regarding the charge drain or i don't know how the charge is actually drained because the the scooter is literally just sitting here since yesterday night i'm and it's just been one and a half weeks since i received this vehicle guys the charger is inside the boot i'm not able to open the boot because it's again software based if it's a software glitch i don't know what they're going to do now, initially, I thought, okay, it might be just a software kind of an issue or uh, sometimes, you know, you your phone doesn't switch off and probably holding your power button to a certain extent, like two to three seconds, it just, you need to do a hard reset, right? So hard reboot or hard restart. So I, I did not know how to do a hard restart for a Nola scooter because I, this was my first electric scooter, in fact. So what I did, I did not want to take any chances since this was pretty new and I did not want to take any uh, ways that uh, would void warranty and stuff. So what I did, I called the customer care. 
Now, this is where the irritation started to me. I'll be very frank and open. This is where it irritated me. I am there at that. Luckily, I'm there at the shop and uh, I was not stranded on the road somewhere. So I just, I just came down to that particular place and I called them and I told them this is what is happening. The first thing that happened is it was very difficult for me to get the customer call center number. At least in their Ola app, after you have purchased your scooter, instead of just giving an email ID, please also give a mobile number for registered users or people who have purchased the scooter as a helpline customer care number. That would really help a lot of people because they cannot fiddle around a lot. And then I had to make a couple of calls to some of my friends who also had purchased, uh, you know, Ola scooters and had to take the numbers from them. It took almost one, one and a half hour duration for that to happen. After which I started contacting these guys. And every time I started contacting, either it used to, I had to choose the option of, you know, going ahead with the tow or going ahead with the service. I said, see, this is my problem. You guys decide what needs to be done. Because I do not know if you say that you are towing it, are you just towing it to my place and keeping it there? And then one of your service engineers comes and visits. Is that what is going to happen? Now there, they did not have an answer. Second, I asked them, where is it that they are sending? I mean, one of the person, I uh, he just said that he's raising a request for a service van to come down to my location, that they will have all the equipments ready to go ahead and uh, check what the actual problem is with the vehicle. And then they're going to come and rectify that then and there. So I was a little happy and uh, he said that, yes, I'm going to go ahead and transfer this to an emergency RSA or uh, roadside assistance uh, service uh, section. So they are going to come back to you. Well, okay. I said, fine, do what you got to do and get me the help that I actually needed right now. And I don't know whether he transferred the call or the call got disconnected because this used to happen multiple times. It just got disconnected. The call did not transfer to the any other department. It got disconnected. Now I had to call back again and some other agent picked up. I need to again start the same problem saga again from the beginning. Now, it tends to get a little irritating when uh, people there are not well versed in terms of what needs to be done, whether they need to handle it in a service department or whether they have to, they have to send, uh, send it across to the roadside assistance department. One person says that, no, this is an issue of roadside assistance. I'm going to transfer your call. And then all, all that happens is the call gets disconnected. And the second person also who picks up on the roadside assistance pro, uh, part uh, will say that I'm going to transfer this to a service department because it's related to service part. And then again, the call gets disconnected. Now, this happened almost five to six times. I've been calling the customer care agents for, uh, for more than 10 times. And it's almost like half an hour to one hour duration that I've spent time only explaining and giving them callbacks again and again. This is something that Ola really, really needs to fix on top priority basis because yes you do have a wonderful product out there i'm i'm okay i'm really happy with the way that the scooter has come out and uh, performance was really nice that's the positive side but on this side the customer side and i mean the service end that is i don't know what to, how i should put this across but yeah uh this is what happened uh, but then luckily, uh, finally, someone actually spoke to me and they said that they're going to raise a request for RSA. And what is going to happen exactly is the process is not about just towing the vehicle away, but they are going to tow it to a workshop. And from, uh, someone from the workshop is going to give me a call once they receive the vehicle. A service manager or a service engineer is going to give me a call and let me know what the actual proceedings and the problems are. I said, why couldn't you tell me this an hour or two hours before? If you had just told that two hours before, it would have saved a lot of time for me because this entire two hours duration, I'm just trying to contact you guys. That is the only thing that I have been doing, trying to call them back to back and trying to tell them this is the problem. Try doing something. Now, imagine the same situation if it had happened to anyone else who was stranded on a road. This luckily happened to me because I was near this particular shop and the owner was also very much uh, supportive in terms of having me, uh, you know, have the vehicle inside a shop and stuff like that. But what if you were really stranded in a location where you couldn't go and mind you guys, what if this has happened in the night and especially with a lady's passenger? That would have been a terrible, terrible thing. Now, that this is the reason why I'm telling you, forget about the technical aspects. Yes, I do understand softwares have glitches. I'm an engineer as such. so. Yes, they do have, they do give hiccups, they do give problems. Mechanical issues do happen to a certain extent, as well as the vehicles might have some faults and stuff. These things might happen due to various reasons, beyond your control also sometimes. But nonetheless, customer support is what people expect to be top-notch. And this is somewhere that Ola really needs to work on. 
now all this on the negative side uh, but yeah uh, finally so, uh, someone just raised it and uh, someone from ghaziabad or uh, up i guess uh, they also gave me a call again back and they told me that they're going to arrange a tow vehicle and it's going to come and reach you within the next one one and a half hour duration i said all right try to get it done as soon as possible because it was already by around 6 6 30 uh, pm in the evening now after which i just kept on waiting for the tow vehicle and uh, yeah he did give me a call but uh, he said that he's on the way picking up another vehicle which has an issue and he is going to come back to me in the next one one hour uh, one and a half hour or so now it was already 7 7 30 pm and i had to again call them back again there was a two and fro conversation that happened between the tow person me and stuff like that so i just requested see if we can make it uh, pretty soon this is one more area that ola needs to really fix you cannot have a single tow person or a single towing agency for the entire city come on guys when you have a vehicle with so many problems and you know for a fact that you do know that this many issues are happening with the vehicle i think it's pretty much uh you know uh good that you have to bolster your force of towing at least and also make sure that the towing happens to a near nearby location wherever you give right so there are a lot of towing agencies as well which can do your work for you so I think that's something that Ola really needs to get it, uh, you know, get it fixed. But yeah, nonetheless, he came down at 8.30 p.m. That's the timeline uh, he came through. Now, I think I'll keep this video uh, here for part one. And for part two, I'm going to tell you what exactly happened after my vehicle was towed. And uh, the service engineer did give me a call. What was the conversation that happened then? And uh, today also I, I was in touch with the service engineer uh, as well. And what did they tell me? What is it that they want to do with the vehicle? I'll give you the update in part two, guys.